Bienvenue à Repousser les limites. Mon nom est Jim So. Ça me fait tellement plaisir de vous accueillir sur ce nouvel épisode. Je vous souhaite une bonne écoute. Bonjour à tous, bienvenue dans ce nouvel épisode. Cette semaine, c'est un nouvel épisode un peu hors série. C'est mon troisième épisode en anglais. Euh, donc, quand je reçois des invités en anglais, c'est toujours des gros épisodes. J'ai reçu Lucy Bartholomew, j'ai reçu mon ami Lee qui a couru plus de 50 fois la distance de 100 miles. Donc, cette semaine, ça ne fait pas exception à mon épisode d'anglais avec un gros invité. Son nom, c'est Patrick Caron. Euh, il y a tellement plein d'accomplissements que je pourrais passer un épisode complet à seulement parler. Euh, mais c'est un une personne vraiment, vraiment inspirante. Euh, ça fait plus que de 4000 jours en ligne qu'il court à tous les jours. Euh, même à une certaine époque, il courait toujours trois fois par jour. Euh, il a couru plus de 10 000 kilomètres dans une année. Il ne s'est jamais blessé dans les 11 dernières années qu'il fait euh, cette séquence de course-là. Euh, donc, on parle de son FKT qu'il a fait sur la Pemi Loop. On parle aussi de son record qu'il a sur le Ghost Train Andre Elmer sous les 14 heures. Donc, euh, j'espère que vous allez être aussi inspiré que je l'ai été à faire cet épisode et cette entrevue avec Patrick. Donc, bon épisode et bonne écoute. Welcome à Repousser les limites. Uh, this week, I have a special guest. Uh, he's from Boston area. He's an athlete uh, from Salomon Elite Team. He runs a lot, a lot of miles per year. He's, he's coach. He's um, a great ambassador for our sport. So, Patrick Caron, thanks a lot to join me on the podcast and thanks for accepting the invitation. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Excited to chat. <laughs> yes. So uh, how did the sport arrive in your life? I know you start very young to uh, for your yeah. running. Um, I, yeah, I've been running most of my life in like various forms. I think early on for me, it was often like running as part of other sports. So I did a lot of team sports when I was younger, starting, you know, in just a couple of years old. Um, okay. did a lot of hockey and soccer and basketball, baseball. And I always enjoyed like the, the running part of it and the speed part of it. Um, and so then, and I did a few like road races, um, just like locally when I was young, um, but more just like recreationally for fun. And then um, in middle school, they like, it was, yeah, the first, first year they held it, the, they had a cross country team. And so then I joined the cross country team in middle school. And then I realized, oh, this is like a, a singular sport, you know, you can just run if you want. Um, and I, I really, yeah, took, took to liking it. And I felt like I, I, It, yeah, it just did really well. And so then I kind of continued to pursue it uh, in, yeah, in the years to come and continued with cross country and in track and field in middle school and in high school. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, I guess, how I was introduced to it. Okay. So you start at high school, you're running. So you pursue, after that, you find your favorite sport, your passion. So you start to building up. Yeah, this. yeah. So in high school, yeah, then I then I, I was doing cross country and track and field. Um, and so that was obviously much, much shorter distances than I yes. prefer to do now. Um, yes. And I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed like the, the team atmosphere of, of being on, yeah, like a, a cross country team. Um, but I think I was more drawn to to trail running and like challenging myself by running further. And so like, as soon as I, as I graduated high school, I, that, that summer after graduation, I started to do a bunch of, of trail, trail races and events. And then that fall got into the, the ultra scene. Um, and so, yeah, I, I started to join a lot of running clubs in the Boston area who many of the folks within them were like, 
long distance or ultra marathon runners. And so that's how I kind of, I had, I guess I had knew like early on in high school, like I had heard about ultras, read about them in magazines or watched like videos. And I was like, Oh, I'm like really, it like really excited me, but I kind of, you know, was dedicated to competing in on my team in high school. And so that, um, yeah, I saved the ultras until like I, until I graduated and then I kind of went full on into them. Okay. Nice. So do you have a inspiration when you start or is that you just go on and. Um, I, I think I was inspired by a lot of the courses, not necessarily like a, a person or an athlete, but I think yes. really drawn by like the opportunity to travel to really unique landscapes and to like experience that on foot um so i would often just look at all of the different races around the world and just you know some of the, some of the epic routes that are out there um so i think i was really drawn to yeah to more the more the places that you could see running than necessarily like competing or af other athletes or okay yeah. To go discover a new area, new place. Yeah. New, uh... Okay, that's nice. So do you think Raisin Barn in Boston have huge influence on you? Um, I mean, probably, I guess. I don't <laughs> necessarily feel like super attached to the area, but um, I think there there's a lot of opportunity both like in like – yeah, within the school systems, there's like a lot of opportunity with these cross country and track teams. And it's a fairly competitive, um, like scene within the Boston area and like New England in general. Um, yes, yeah. so that kind of helps push you competitively and athletically. Um, and then, yeah, like Boston is definitely a, a running hub. I would say more like a, a, a road running and track and field hub, but a lot of, um, you know, they're, especially with the Boston marathon, like, in, you know, pretty iconic race. And that goes through, um, you know, the towns near me. And so I would, when I was younger, like, you know, watch the Boston marathon and be exposed to that. So I'm sure, I'm sure there was like some indirect, uh, influence. Um, but yeah, I think, um, yeah. So I, and I, yeah, I think, the opportunity to there, there's so many running clubs to join within the area like I found when I travel other places there is not necessarily groups to run with and I think that can be hard for someone new to the sport if you don't have other people to run with or to show you around um, in Boston you know there's dozens of run clubs every night um, so there's lots of opportunity to find people that yeah that that you like and feel connected to and run with, um, you know, all paces, all abilities. Um, yeah. So I, I do think it, it has like really been a part of my progression, I guess. Okay. Nice. So, uh, so you joined running club uh, fast, I think when, after you finished high school, so it has influence on you to go pursue distance. You told me and endurance race. Yeah, I think just like, I mean, because yeah, I, I knew I was familiar with the ultra running scene, but didn't necessarily know like, you know, friends who were running ultras. So then when you join a running club and you're all of a sudden being surrounded by a bunch of people who have run, you know, these, these crazy events, you're like, oh, wow, like if I can run with them, then maybe I could do it too. You know, you, you feel, yeah. uh, yeah, there, there's much more, um, yeah, the, the, the path to get there is much more obvious, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, especially it's such a close knit scene within, I think, New England area, um, that a lot of these people go to the same events. And so then you start to just establish these connections with people all around, regardless of whether they live near you or not, you're showing up at the same races on the weekend. And so you start to have this community, um, that's kind of, yeah, that you're a part of and that supports you and you support them back. And so there's a lot of camaraderie in that. Um, and I think finding that after like leaving a 
high school program where I had that team felt really nice to like fall into a, a group of people. Um, we didn't necessarily like all train together, but all supporting one another. Um, and yeah, so I think I found a lot of support through, yeah, through those initial clubs that I joined. Okay. Very nice. Yes. Very nice recommendation for one people to uh, want to increase volume and to find good strategy to build for ultras or. And um, okay, I need to understand one thing I see on your video. Um, how can you manage to run 6,000 miles in one year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I wouldn't say it was the goal going into like any year, um, but I, I think for me, like consistency is really important in my running. Um, yes. in, in practice, um, and both, yeah, for, in terms of like, you know, both performance and just, um, I think sustainability in the support sport. And like, I think, um, yeah, I, and just enjoyment. Um, and so I've had a running streak for a while where I've, you know, run, run every day, um, for the past several years. And, um, so that naturally just gets me out the door every morning. And then I don't necessarily go into every day with like a set, set mileage in mind. Um, okay. but I kind of do what, yeah, what, what feels good. And, um, and generally I, I like to push myself further, I guess. Um, and yeah, so with, with running just that, yeah, 6,000 miles in a year, I was often like, have, you know, have often been been doubling uh or tripling runs like so i'll i'll run in the morning maybe run midday and then run in the evening and often several of those runs each week are with other people um and yeah when you're running with other people whether it's one person or a whole whole group of people it definitely makes the the miles go by faster and so um yes. often i would i would just do that you know on a on a saturday morning i might run with one or two different running clubs like one one on the early morning and then one late morning and <laughs> so it, it helped um yeah that yeah I think that made it um possible and then I think initially you know I ramped up my mileage quite a bit after high school when I first um yeah got into the ultra running scene um and I think I I I was lucky, I guess, in a sense of avoiding any sort of like injuries in that ramp up. Um, and then I've generally been pretty consistent since then. Um, and I think just that consistency allows me to continue to, you know, train and, and race at a high level. Um, and then, of course, like depending on the event that I'm training for, there's some like added specificity um, for like the course, whether it's like, you know, a super mountainous race or a super flat race. Um, but I find just with like high volume, like throughout that you can, it allows you to do quite a bit, you know. Um, so I, I appreciate that aspect. So do you think consistency is the best key to... Um build up a fast run to build up a um, mm, um, better competitive athlete? Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to, to everyone. Um, I think there's different approaches. I think for me, yeah. it, it has worked. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think just, you know, you, you can get substantially faster by just increasing volume without even necessarily adding in speed work um i think it just your your rate of perceived exertion like with running just lowers quite a bit um when you're when you're running a lot um i think it's important to have both consistency and also like flexibility um so like i think consistency and rigidity might like lead to issues but if you can be consistent yeah. and also be flexible with your approach then I think that will take you pretty far. Nice. So I saw you're very, uh, you're strong on road race. You're strong on trail race too. So what is your favorite of the, of the two? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I enjoy different, different aspects. I enjoy, I definitely, I wouldn't say I prefer one or the other, but I definitely love like the, um, being pretty out there, like in, in nature. Um, and so the more mountainous rugged races, I think often are what draw me. Um, but I also am like a competitor and, um, and so I like to compete regardless of like the, you know, the terrain, um, yeah, and yeah. The, especially the, the road running scene is so competitive. Mm. Um, and there is just something like, yeah, it's hard to explain. I mean, with road running, it is a little more like time focused. Like the goals are often just like, oh, how many seconds or minutes can I shave off of my PR? And that yep. is exciting to an extent. But then yeah. like the the trails and ultras open up so much more because there's so many more variables involved that kind of time often goes out the window. Um, mm-hmm. So I like that that it allow there, there's way more opportunity and way more challenges that you can um expose yourself to um where yeah the 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 road i mean you, you can obviously continue to progress but um it's a different kind of uh yeah there's different drivers and then i, I just love the the community of people in the trail scene uh, i find i really connect with them and even though there are there are a lot of like really competitive athletes. It's a very chill feeling environment. Yes, um, it's and very I, different. I that. Yeah. And that really draws me in just because I, that, that's what it comes down to, I think is, is the people and like both the places you go, but the people you connect with. Um, I, I think that's what really draws me to, to the trail and ultra scene. Okay. So at the moment we we talk what is your performance your your um, most proud of it I know you run uh, you ran sub two hours 30 minutes at Boston Marathon so congratulations it's way way fast <laughs> yeah so, is there one performance you're m- more uh, more proud of it um there's not one that like immediately comes to mind um I think I mean I am someone who like I guess I just have so many goals within the sport um that like I find it hard to like settle you know it's always like oh yeah I ran like sub 230 at Boston but I'm like oh I feel like I could run you know several minutes faster so there's like it's kind of a combination of like, oh, appreciating like what I have accomplished, but also be like understanding that I have all these these other goals as, as well that are continuing to to drive me. Um, I think, you know, yeah, that that Boston performance, um, I think that was 2019. Um, that was just a, like a really special day. Um, I just like, it felt so, so natural and like, I felt so at ease. And so I, those are the days that are like, you know, that, that you continue to like train for, and then you continue to like get excited about, um, you know, there are some days where it's maybe more, more challenging and more suffering, which is Mm -hmm. fun too. But the days where like everything, you just feel like you're floating and just like that, those are the days that are. I think really memorable. Um, and so, yeah, another one of those I think was, was when I ran, um, this race in New Hampshire ghost train, um, and ran, yeah, like, uh, a little under 14 hours, 13, uh, 50 for hundred miles there. Um, and that, um, you know, yeah, that is just such like a, such a magical day, I guess that came together then. Um, so those are some of like the more memorable, I guess, like performances. Um, but also, yeah, sometimes it's not like a race. Sometimes it's just like a run with, with friends in the mountains, like often, yeah, some, some runs that I've done in the white mountains in New Hampshire, um, 
like on on the PEMI loop, but like not necessarily like going for an FKT, but just like long days out there with friends or in Acadia National Park. Um, there's some like incredible runs. So those those are also like I guess some of the memorable yeah moments. Okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I know you uh, have FKT on PEMI loop. Uh, yes, yeah, in from in 28, 20, what was that? 2018, I think. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Do you yeah, have we're... other goal of FKT? And do you have, uh, do, have you done others? Um, I've done a couple others. I think the PEMI was probably the, yeah, definitely the most high profile one. I'd like to go back to, to do the PEMI another time. Um, you know, that was, that was 2018. And I feel like I've progressed like as an athlete since then. Um, mm -hmm. And the times continue to get faster. And so I, I think I'd, I'd love to go back um, to PEMI. And then, you know, there, there's also the, the hut traverse in the whites um, and the presidential traverse. Those routes are pretty, okay. um, pretty popular and have like quite a bit of history. And I would love yeah. to, to try to go for the FKT on those. Um, there's, yeah. And th there's like a few like lesser known ones in the Boston area, but that a lot of like the locals know. Um, and yeah, those ones draw me. Um, yeah, there, there's, uh, yeah, a bunch around New England, I guess. The New England scene, even though it's not necessarily, like, in the limelight all of the time, like, compared to maybe some other places in the U.S. or the world, like, it has, like, a very, um, there's a very, like, close-knit community and a lot of history to many of the roots around New England. Um, and that really draws me in, like with an FKT, being able to become more familiar with not only like the route itself, but like the the history and the people that like are a part of that route. Um, that is something that like excites me about like focusing on a, a new FKT. Um, and yeah, so those are like the initial ones. There are some like longer multi-day FKTs that I would be drawn to in the future. Um, okay. But right now I've only done done single day ones. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm not sure when the, the multi-day stuff will come into <laughs> the picture. So, so you have run 100 miles. Do you project yourself to run longer in the future? Um. Yeah, like I think like I'm, I'm definitely interested in like 24 hour races um and i i'd say some there yeah i mean maybe like a 200 mile race um i think multi-day fkts interest me a bit more like something like the long trail in vermont um, oh yes yes or yeah so that's like a yeah the pretty iconic route and that very like yeah like I mean, different, but similar terrain to say the PEMI, like pretty technical and rocky and rudy. And um, yeah, that some something like that, which is a couple days um, and not necessarily like the Appalachian Trail where you're out there for like a, <laughs> a month and a half, but maybe in the future. Um, but yeah, I got to start, got to start with the, the littler ones first. <laughs> yes, yes. I hear you. Awesome. So, um, uh, do you have a specific program or do you have a coach that follow you in the past? Uh, how you manage your training in general? Uh, yeah, right now I, I do not work with a coach. I think I'm like considering working with one in the future. Um, I think because I like to, because I like a lot of flexibility in my schedule with running, I find it hard to wrap my head around working with a coach sometimes. <laughs> I think yeah, I would be yeah. a hard person to coach in some ways. Um, <laughs> but I also see a lot of like the benefits in it. And I have a lot of friends who like coach athletes or who are coached and see how it's benefited them. Um, so I, I'm definitely like drawn to working with a coach, but I think it would, you know, finding the right relationship, like would, would take some, some time. Um, so yeah, I think my approach, like I, 
yeah, just coaching myself. Like I, I definitely, I would say like I'm a student of the sport and like do a lot of research and reading and, um, you know, from both like the science perspective and also like looking at, you know, other athletes in the sport and how they're training and uh, reading a lot from other coaches who publish like, you know, various articles about um, their own coaching philosophies. So I think I, I like being exposed to a lot of that. And I don't necessarily let like one thing like dictate the direction I go, but I kind of yeah, use all of that to, I guess, sort out my own approach. <laughs> yes, yes, I hear you. And uh, do you do a specific gym program to uh, build muscle? And um, I do a lot of like core work, I would say, um, but not, yeah, not n nothing like super structured, but um, I okay. think, um, yeah, I do a lot of core and like activation and like pre-activation like more stretching and exercising like before runs and and after runs um okay. that's that's generally been my approach um yeah and I think just the variety of like the terrain I run on I think helps like with just like working a, a lot of different different muscle groups and like the variety there um yes, yes. so I I've been generally pretty lucky uh in my running i guess career or uh so far um but yeah i think like also some of that you know maybe just comes from being like young and a little more resilient so i think <laughs> in the future i think maybe having a, a little more yeah uh specificity around that kind of uh, stuff might be important <laughs> okay Okay, nice. And um, so you start a company, uh, Move Free. So how this this project was born is that is idea you ID you have for a long time. How it happens? Yeah. Um. So yeah, Move Free is a company I started, uh, or at least the idea, like officially launched in in 2018, and our first products came out in 2019. Um, so it's been a couple of years in the making. I think the idea existed before then. I've always been someone who, um, like I consider myself a pretty like creative person and a pretty, um, like interested in entrepreneurship and, um, the pursuit of like starting my own business or yeah, launching an idea and, um, solving problem. And, um, and so I think move free I, I didn't necessarily have like a vision of like oh I want to start an apparel company I think it more started from I wanted to make a uh a, a larger impact I guess within the the trail running in the the outdoor space um and kind of connect outdoor recreation and outdoor conservation I I think I saw a need um for like I think often um, within within our community, there's there can be like a disconnect between both in enjoying the places we we train in and race in, but not necessarily knowing how to protect those places um, and preserve them for future de generations. And so I kind of wanted to figure out a way how to kind of tie those two together. Um, and and for me, the I guess the the easiest or natural like approach was um like launch launching a, a brand and having having a like yeah in the product is more the vehicle I guess to create that change um and so having yeah having high, high performing products that people will will appreciate using but then through through purchasing those products I'm also helping kind of deliver deliver a message and then through um through the proceeds from those pro products giving back um that's like a, a large part um really really like this the sole um 
sole purpose, I guess, of the company is to be able to give back in a larger way. Um, so that's kind of how the idea formed. It was more just, I think, a, a passion project. Um, and it really just started with one hat that I launched in 2019. And then um, there was a lot of initial excitement from that and demand. And so then I started to think like, okay, where, where can this go? Um, and, you know, it's a couple of years later and I'm still figuring it out. So <laughs> there's not necessarily uh yeah, like I, I'm still like formulating, I guess, how I can, how I can, yeah, accomplish the, the goals I have with the company and it's continuing to evolve in nature. Um, but that's, that's also like, I think an enjoyable pursuit for me. Um, I, I, and I, yeah, with running that like is one kind of channel of my creative energy, but then also through this business, that's another channel of it. Um, and I think they work together well um and yeah complement each other and it allows me um yeah that that's kind of i guess <laughs> what i'd have to say about move free <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice congratulations for this move thank you uh, so where can we find your product i know we can buy online yeah so right on right now they're, they're just online um So movefreedesigns.com um, and we're on, on all the social media platforms um, and we, we, yeah, we ship internationally. So wherever you're listening, <laughs> probably ship it to you. Um, and yeah, we're hoping to be in some, some run specialty and outdoor stores in the, in the coming years. Um, okay. They are now online and um, mainly sell, sell hats and other uh, running accessories and then some apparel as well. And we work with a couple different um, running clubs to design their apparel as well. Um, and okay. hoping to work with some races to design apparel for events. Um, and yeah, we also have an ambassador team of, um, of athletes around the country as well as some international ambassadors. And so we're always Uh, looking for for new athletes to join on board and who want to spread the the move free love wherever they live um, so yeah you can also find out about our athlete program on the website as well okay so i i need to order mine because you told me pierre fauché uh, have one so yes i, mean, <laughs> I need to competition with pierre fauché <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he's a he's a great customer <laughs> and a good friend. <laughs> nice. So, um you you are coach for a group, a running group, and you coach a person too. So, it does it help you to be a better athlete? Yeah, um I've I think so. I think you can often um <laughs> I think it's easier to coach other people than coach yourself. You know, it's harder, yeah. easier yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> to give advice than to take advice. Um, but also then you can reflect on, yeah, I think you can reflect on that. And just like for me, I think a lot with coaching similar to like the company that I've created, it's like giving back and, and sharing like all, all that I've benefited from the sport with other people. So um, I've, I've, coached like middle school cross country at one point in my life um and like that was a really rewarding experience because I that's like when I got really excited about the sport in middle school and so be able to be able to see other athletes like uh start to discover running and find joy through running I think that like is the most enjoyable part for me like I think it's 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 like an added benefit to see people do well and perform well, but like really just for someone to like find a love for running. That's, I guess what I, what I get the most out of like coaching. To transmit to passion to uh, the new generation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like whether, whether they continue running or not, I think there's a lot to, to learn about yourself through through running. Um, and I think there's a lot of values that, that you can apply to other areas of your life through running. So I think even if it's, even if someone's only running for a year, like doing their middle school cross country or high school cross country, I think that's like a pretty formative experience. And I think, yeah, it, it influences how you relate to the world, like in, in the future. So, um, of course, like it's awesome when, when you see people still running like several, 
several years down the road. Um, but, you know, I also understand running's not necessarily for everyone. So, <laughs> so have you coached some um, uh, young, uh, young person that are now uh, be building because you inspire, inspire them or? Um, there's like, I, I, I guess I've, continue to follow some of the folks I coach like in future years. Um, I don't necessarily know my yeah. influence, but um, I, I think like there's definitely some friends, I think who I've run with who um, continue. Yeah. Like I just see how much they like, yeah, continue to be drawn to the sport and the like, um, yeah. And, I'm just one of many people who have like played a role in, in their journey. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, I, I don't know, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what, what does look a normal day in your life and, um, weak middle age? A normal day in my life, you said? Yes. Uh, so you run two times in a, in a day or three times depends. And what, yeah, is, I'll, your, I'll, I'll, what is your routine yeah. for, uh, all all week and i have no idea 100 mile is normal week for for you or yeah yeah i'd say um generally on the the weekdays um i'm run, i'm running usually tw twice a day um so i like to run earlier in the morning um if it works with with my schedule um and uh, yeah so often you know five five in the morning like a pretty I, I'm I wake up super early and there's not much else to do <laughs> early in the morning so uh getting out the door is yeah often the the best use of my time um and so ru yeah running early in the morning um sometimes alone sometimes with friends um and then my day like isn't super structured I yeah I've been kind of really focused on um on move free recently and just kind of taking move free my brand to the next level um so often working on both like shipping and fulfilling products that have been ordered but also designing new products for yeah upcoming upcoming launches and then kind of marketing and social media um for the brand um a lot of like supply chain kind of kind of research and work um and yeah so there there it's always like and i like it because it keeps me on my toes there's always something new i guess um with with this business because it's just continuing to change so much um so that that is a lot of my day um i also um yeah different times of the year like i i've directed some races and i uh Uh, yeah, I'm the director of a race for the Trail Animals Running Club in the Boston area, and uh, that's all like volunteer. But um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, as the race comes up, I'm often spending a lot of my time preparing for the event, and oh, we've yes, had five hundred sure. plus like participants, and so um, it takes a lot to you know make sure that everyone has has a great day out there. So. Um, yeah. And I, I'd like to get into more, more event directing. Um, so that's something I'm, I'm looking towards in the coming years. I've been working on trying to permit and put together um, some events of my own as well. Um, so that's, that's definitely a process working with the different like stakeholders um, involved. Um, and then, yeah, um, on, on the weekends, I'm often, if I'm not, traveling which i would say i'm often traveling to events in new england whether it's like a, a race that i'm running personally or volunteering at um i like to I, i just like to show up regardless of whether i'm i'm running or not um it's fun to see see friends and um i enjoy 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 the atmosphere so i often will be traveling on the weekends but if not um Yeah, long long runs um, around around where where I live or wherever I am that weekend, um, and so some yes yeah, on the weekends is usually where I do my my longer adventures. I'd say, um, yeah. So that's kind of a general week, but it it changes quite a bit. <laughs> um, yeah, and and like in my 
free time, I guess, like whatever free time there is. Like I really enjoy reading. Um, I, I consider myself someone who like re reads quite a bit. Um, and I listen to a lot of podcasts and um, yeah, I'm someone who just enjoys like following like the sport of running. And so um, as well as other, yeah, it's not, I don't listen to only running podcasts, but often they are running podcasts. Um, but yeah, I enjoy like following the sport pretty closely. And so that is something that I, I would say I do in my free time as well. Okay. So uh, did, did you have a lot of variation of uh, millage in your week? Depends uh, what, what, how you plan your schedule for the year, I bet. Yeah, I, I, yeah, so I often with like big, big goal races, those will be planned further in advance. I often like to like do little or local events as well. And so those I might just hop into like, you know, si sign up like a week before. Um, and so that is less like structured, the, the approach to that. But, you know, for, you know, if there's a hundred miler on the calendar, or like a big FKT, there's going to be, you know, several weeks or months worth of, you know, approach build that. up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's not always necessarily like a, a build up so much in terms of mileage, because I would say I'm generally someone who trains higher mileage like year round. Um, but it's more, um, you know, focusing on this, the specificities of that event. Um, and so or yeah, whether it's training on the course or trying to replicate the course in training. Um, or in workouts so that that yeah i will do with like bigger events um but yeah during during the week um say my mileage doesn't like fluctuate a whole bunch i'd say generally my like base mileage kind of just stays relatively the same and then with like the longer, like long runs will like get longer, you know, <laughs> yes, um, yes. but the base Our mileage is off back to back long, long exactly. Run. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that will be more what shifts, I guess. Okay. So what would you recommend to a person, uh, listen to the podcast, want to start running, how to approach the starting and build up the progression? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think finding, you know, what's sustainable for you um, so that don't necessarily try to copy someone else, what they're yeah. doing. You know, we, we each lead different lives and have different stressors in our lives and different schedules. And so finding something that Like, yeah, like I said earlier, I do think consistency is really important, but that can look different for different people. But I think finding what, how you can be consistent in a sustainable way. So I think design, like, that's going to have you be in it for, yeah, like, I, I think that just allows it to be way more sustainable and less, like, less injury risk, less, like, you know, less just like not enjoying yourself. <laughs> like, so, uh, that, that I guess is, I think important, um, you know, in terms of like specifics of what that looked like, it's hard to say without knowing the scenario of someone, but I, and I, yeah. And I think another thing like for me and for many other people, find, finding people to run with, um, yeah. yeah, that helps quite a bit. So whether it's, you know, some of your runs, all of your runs, one of your runs, like I, I think it is really helpful and beneficial to join, you know, join a local running club or, you know, one of your coworkers might run or a neighbor, or just like find, find folks to run with. Um, that, that just makes it you, you, like, I think, especially if you're newer to running, you can kind of be in your head quite a bit um and it can that in like you might you know it's gonna feel less natural to you at first um and so not to necessarily distract yourself from that discomfort but um yeah i think running with other people like getting out of your own head um is is helpful <laughs> yeah it can challenge yourself to build up speed too 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Far I mean, in, in speed yeah, work with just... other people a little faster than you, it pushed you to uh, increase too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, surrounding yourself with people who are more experienced um, will definitely, definitely help. Um, yeah, I'm curious for, for you, when you started, what helped you like the most? Like, with... uh, I think it's the running club. The running yeah. club in Brahmont helped me a lot. Um, I discovered Ultra 50K. Um, my first opinion, I think I thought 50K, wow, that's very yeah. crazy <laughs> in trail. But I see people look way normal. They run 50K yeah. and I was, ah, okay. I think it's accessible Mo yeah. more, more than I expect. So... Definitely. Yeah. And, yeah. If you see other people do it. It makes it a little more approachable um, because yeah. we're all like, yeah. I mean, even if we're different abilities, like I think seeing other, we're all like, I don't know, often like it's often like maybe used too much, but like ordinary people doing like extraordinary things like, but that's yes, exactly. You wouldn't like necessarily know someone walking by on the street is like running marathons or running ultras or hundred milers, but like they might be, and like, they just look like a normal person, <laughs> but yeah. So it is something that like, I think is more attainable than, than many people realize. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. I love like, yeah, especially like hundred mile races, like, you know, being at the finish line and seeing all of the different people that come across the finish line and anywhere from, you know, half a day to like a day and a half, like there's just such like a, a range. Um, and yeah, I think that like is really inspiring. Like, so, so that'd be the other thing. If you want to get into ultras, I would recommend volunteering at a race. Oh yes. And yes. yeah, whether it's at an aid station, the finish line and you, that will really inspire you and show you like what, what's possible. Yes. So do you have a favorite distance for you or that depends on road, depends on trail, depends uh, the opportunities you have? Um, yeah, I, I guess like I'm continuing to find that out. I don't necessarily want to focus on one specific distance. I think I like in general, like though 50K to 50 miles on like fairly rugged mountainous terrain is I think um those those are pretty fun days usually <laughs> um i think you know and you can do quite a bit of that i think throughout a year where like you can race yeah. you know you can yeah, re yeah. recover fast for 50 exactly yeah. compare so, 100 mile yeah yeah so you can do those more more often whereas a hundred miler you can't necessarily do <laughs> all the time um yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so I think you can, you can recover and, and do more of those. And so that, that I think I'm drawn to just because I, I like racing frequently and I like seeing different events and traveling. And so that distance allows me to, yeah, do that more. So what do you think is the key to be consistent on road and trail race at the same time? Um, I mean, like in a sense, like fitness is fitness. So like, yeah, I think, yeah, I think there is a lot of carryover between the two. I think maybe, yeah, like if you're a road runner converting to trails, there's, you know, some specificity in just like the terrain might be harder to, to get that used ill. to. Yeah. That, yeah and that might that might be less convertible but i think it still is like if, if you're a super I, there's plenty of people i guess we've seen that who are fast road runners who convert to very good trail runners um yeah. and vice versa like i think with with road with trail to road i think that can be more challenging just to like because roads there's much more repetition um and much more dialing in of, of pace um, and it's a little more monotonous in nature. Um, and so, and, and just like the, 
yeah, your, your muscles are going to be working like in a, in a different way. Um, and especially just like the turnover, if you're trying to like run fast, I think that can be harder to convert, you know, from a trail to road. And for me, like living in new England, like all of my life, the, the winters get kind of tough and like, I'm sure you experienced that. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. yeah. <laughs> so I think like often, even though like I love running trails in the winter, I find myself running roads quite a bit. Um, and I think that helps like where, you know, I, I focus on, on speed in the winter and then that kind of sets me up through, you know, the speed will kind of go through, through early spring, late spring. And I often run the Boston marathon in April. And so I kind of have this, this base of, of speed and road fitness. And then I spend the, the mount the summers in the mountains. Um, and so I think that diversity, I guess, like allows me to kind of, yeah, be able to do well in, in both, both worlds. Um, okay. but yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of just making the most of, of New England running, I guess, but some people, you know, will, will move to somewhere where they can run trails year round or like, you know, so, um, yeah, I, I guess like I, I, I definitely like some days in the winter when it's like freezing cold and, <laughs> you know, you're soaking wet and it's like, Oh, I could be like in Arizona or something. <laughs> and like, Oh, it'd be so nice and warm and just like, you know, be wearing shorts and a singlet. But like, I do think there, there are benefits to the, the new England approach. <laughs> yes, of course. I think mentally too, it helps quite a bit. If you can, if you can get through it mentally, you can be pretty tough. <laughs> yes. Running. Um, minus 20 celsius you're like okay yes it's a yeah. good accomplishment <laughs> today yes <laughs> so do do you run always outside even in winter yeah yeah i do all all my running outside um just i think that's part like i mean i enjoy like the act of running but i also just enjoy the act of being in nature and being in the elements and being connected to the outdoors um yes, so yes. even if it is even if it is not the most uh welcoming environment outside <laughs> it is still like i don't know like yeah it's just nice to spend like as much time as you can outside in a day um and so yeah i pretty much year round am outside and my streak is like all outside um i know some people will run on treadmills for like running streaks or um i think like for i think it can be helpful like if, I, if i'm training like say uphill to get inside and get on like an incline trainer or like a treadmill that has you know yeah that, that can incline because that can be hard to do in the winter when the trails are super icy um so yeah, yeah. That, that's like one i guess like thing that i do or like get on a bike in inside um just like for for cross training um but yeah generally i like to be outside <laughs> nice yeah sire you treadmill is is good but uh, for not too long <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so what about your running streak um i i saw you do more than four thousand days in rows yeah so, do you plan to go long time like this? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a end goal in mind. Um, you know, I, I think some people, when they get into like running streaks, it might be like, oh, run, you know, every day of the week or run for a month straight. And then it often like turns into run for a year straight. And then like yeah. after a year, like it just kind of arbitrary, like there's no, there's no end goal, you know, like I think just yeah, to yeah. be able to continue to do it for as long as you can. Um, and yeah, so I, I would love, you know, regardless of whether it's all the time or not, like I, I definitely hope to be running like several decades from now. Um, I think that's super, super cool to see athletes who are like in their seventies, eighties, who are still like at, some of the events that I go to like yeah, that's very inspiring and it's yeah. it's um very common on 
East North America uh, to see on ultras. Yeah. Yeah. It's super special. And just to like hear. Yeah. I mean, some of them have been in it, got into it later in life too, you know, and, and that's, I think really unique and, and cool as well. Just like understanding what drew them to like running when they were like in their sixties and like starting, like being a runner for the first time when you're 60 something years old, like that, I feel like is a, is a pretty special thing. Um, but yeah, the, just like some of the stories, I guess that you hear and, um, the lessons that you can kind of take from that. Um, and it, yeah, like, I think with the consistency, like what I was saying earlier, the having flexibility, like seems like very important because you, you need to be able to understand that, your running is going to evolve like you're you know it's yeah it's going to continue to like shift like throughout the years and so I think about that sometimes like oh what is my running going to look like 10 years from now 20 years from now like and it's probably going to be like yeah like there's no way to know what that's going to be like but um yeah yeah just I guess like knowing that it's going to continue to evolve and that the the goals will evolve like you know it, might be less about competition or like just but having like personal goals not just like you know more like outward goal like you know not solely comparing yourself to to others but having these like inner goals i think is is helpful so when you start this did you have um a streak you want to do like one month or how how does it start i mean i started like I was running cross country and track in middle school high school and we would have practices at least in high school like every day of the week except for Sundays and on Sundays because we didn't have practice I would usually <laughs> do like trail runs because the rest of the time we were doing more like road running or track workouts and so yeah. then Sundays were the day that I could go run like trails like around so that was like I think how like I just found myself running every day of the week um and it wasn't you know it was like an easy recovery run like because I was yeah you can't necessarily have hard days <laughs> all the days no. uh so like I was it would but it was just like more just because I wanted to get out on the trails um and then I think I just realized after a couple months oh I've been running every day <laughs> so then it became like an actual thing but it wasn't like I started with the goal in mind to run every day it just kind of naturally evolved um, and then once I realized I was running every day I said oh maybe I'll see how long I can keep this up um, and yeah I think like I just like the fact that you don't really question like what you're going to do that day or like getting out the door like it's just like oh it's just like part of my day you know <laughs> um, yeah. so it makes it easier like you just by just committing like mentally to like going for a run I think it makes it easier for me in some ways like I think some people are like oh running every day that sounds so hard and like for me it makes it easier i guess like but that that's just me <laughs> yes but i'm sure it's better to it make it happen naturally than to have pressure and oh i need to run because i yeah. haven't even so it's way better better approach yeah i think yeah healthier more sustainable like um in that way um yeah and generally like you know it, yeah it you know, there's 24 hours in a day, like it, it, <laughs> there's a lot of time, like to be able to go out for a run, even if it's just like a mile, like, you know, you can find like, yeah, you generally can find the, the time in the day to do that. I think yeah. if like, if you can't find like, and it's time for yourself, you know, it's like a form of like, you know, caring for yourself, like it's, it's yeah. more personal time. And so finding time to be alone to like, do something for yourself I think like and take it like yeah I think running can be a form of that um so whether it's just 10 minutes or an hour or whatever like just yeah I, I find that helpful for me 
um, just to just mentally, like even not even the physical part of running, just like mentally having that space for myself is really nice. So um, we talk a lot about marathon and your trail race experience, but have you ever run a ultra marathon on roads? Um, ultra marathon on roads, just like training runs, I guess, not any okay. races. Um, yeah, like I've definitely gone in some like 50K to 50 mile like training runs that are... <laughs> Mainly 50 road. mile training run <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah th th those will be a mix of maybe road and trail but yeah i haven't done any road specific i'm interested in like a 50k road um i think that would be pretty fun and i think convert well from like a, a road marathon um yeah. and yeah maybe but But ultras on road are not quite popular. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's interesting. I, yeah, they're like, I am drawn to like the 24 hour distance per se. Like, but most of those races are on like super short, you know, often road loops. Like, like in a uh, couple of weeks, I'm going to be going out to Desert Solstice in Arizona, not to race, but um, I'm helping with the commentary there. And that's like a 24 hour track race um, with a lot of top like, competitors and it's all yeah it's, it's a quarter mile lap on a track that you're running for 24 hours so it's like i'm drawn to running for 24 hours but the actual like course is not the most like inspiring you know <laughs> like yeah yeah and i understand that it's about it's about like optimizing conditions and speed and so like Yeah, I get that you're not going to necessarily have a 24 hour race that's like on trails or in the mountains. Like, I guess that's what draws me maybe something like a like a last person standing style event, because a lot of those are on like a mix of road and trail um, and they're longer than, you know, a quarter mile. They're like, you know, they're four, four point one six. So those I think like are intriguing. They're also pretty intimidating because there is no there's no finish line. <laughs> um, yes. So you don't know whether you're in it for 24 hours or 48 hours, you know, there's no, there's no end in time. <laughs> yes. It's hard to prepare your mindset, but yeah. <laughs> so, so you have interest to try backyard ultra. Yeah, I, I, definitely in the future. Um, I think, you know, it would suit me well. Um, just because I think mentally, you know, well, for one, I'm running every day. So like, <laughs> I'm going to be running the next day. <laughs> um, but yeah, like to, and I think just like, by because I often run multiple times per day, like I'm used to running on, on tired legs. Like, I think the sleep deprivation part though, like would be the, the challenge for me. Um, you know, I've, run a couple hundred mile races but like i haven't really like i've run in into the night but i like to go into like a, another day into another morning like i haven't really experienced that yet um and so and i don't like yeah like i think i operate okay with like little sleep but i'm not super used to being sleep deprived yeah, so that yeah. part would be i think the biggest challenge um and Yeah, that, that that would be the part to figure out and a lot of unknown and it's a little hard to train for that. Um, I mean, I guess I've heard different approaches for how to prepare, um, but yeah, it'd be a, it would be a fun challenge at some point. I think in the next couple of years, I'll definitely um, try one. I've, I've spectated a couple and I'm always like, <laughs> yeah, whenever I go to spectate, I'm like, oh, I wish I was running, you know, <laughs> um, they're, they're a super fun race to watch. Um, and it, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Or like the event, like Barkley, is that something that you have in ad for one day in the long future or the BFC? Yeah, yeah, I definitely like there, there isn't like any event that I guess I'm not interested in like I'm I, I think I like trying a bunch of different things 
I think also, wow, like, like I like diversity, but I think also with my, like try, with trying to be competitive, I think it is helpful to kind of focus on a general range of events. Like, and yes. while I can focus on, while I can focus on speed and being competitive. So that's kind of my, my goal, like at, at this point in my life, but in the and future. And you're still young. So your speed is still a good. Yeah. Focus. So in the future, I think my goals will evolve and then I'll be more drawn to more like, yeah, more of the races that are less about, you know, who's the fastest and more about <laughs> who's the, who's the toughest, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, Barclays is like, and I have like some friends who have, have run it. Um, and yeah. And so hearing a lot of the stories, um, I think the navigation, like that'd be a pretty fun thing to try to like prepare for um how to nap you know just like a helpful skill to have you know <laughs> like learning yeah. how to navigate like I, I, that, that would be fun to a approach um but yeah i don't have like an immediate draw to it like i'm not like trying to get in next year or something <laughs> but maybe <laughs> maybe in the next few years okay nice so do you have a specific plan for uh, next year 2023 yeah um i'd like to So I'll be running Boston in April, the Boston Marathon. Um, I'd love to try to go for like a personal record there. Um, and so just like focusing this winter on more speed and road running and doing some some shorter kind of road events like uh, leading up to that. Um, there's a lot of like uh, the USA track and field, New England has a bunch of events that are pretty competitive um and a lot of people to help push you um so yeah i think some of those kind of in the early season and then yeah boston in april um and then uh i have yeah there's some fkt projects like in the whites like going back to pemi uh okay. that i'd love to do and that that would probably be you know, more, more in August, September, um, before then. Um, yeah, I mean, one of these years I'd like to target like the golden ticket series and, and try to get something for Western States. Um, but I don't know if that's going to be next year. There's also the world championships in Austria next June. Um, okay. Yeah, and they just announced the qualifiers for that. Um, and um, they have like, you know, they have the, the the uphill only, they've got the uphill downhill race, and they've got the short distance and long distance um, races as well. And so there's a couple uh, qualifier races for the US team that are in the April, May timeframe. Um, and so I think that like doing doing Boston in early April and then one of those in late April or early May to see about making a world's team. That is something I'd like to, like, I'd, I'd love to represent the U S at a world championship. Um, nice. so yeah, but you know, yeah, that, that could go like, you know, if you make the team great, if not, then it, like the goals would kind of shift, I guess. Um, I'd like to do like another hundred miler next fall, Um, and yeah, either, um, there's a, there's a bunch of great options through the fall. There's ghost train, which I've run before in October. There's also like hobbling a hundred, which like is a, is a golden ticket for Western, like, and that has a, draws a pretty competitive field. The hundreds that I run haven't had super deep fields. So I think it would be interesting to compete in a, in a hundred miler where there's a bunch of people pushing you to, to race hard. Um, and you know, that could go one of two ways where <laughs> you run really fast or you blow up. So I think that would be interesting to, to be in like a pretty stacked field. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, that like, hopefully my season would kind of build up for something like that in the fall. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, and then I'm directing, um, at least one, 
ultra next year and i'm hoping to put together like another event that uh is yet yet to be announced but i yeah i've got some like race directing plans as well for next year so um, okay yeah so do you have a plan for the uh, 10 years to come five years to come or you go one year per year and you're still building your progression yeah there, there's i wouldn't say it's like super super planned out um you know i've got these goals like i mentioned like love to run western states love to make a world's team like um i think did, I, did utmb I, it's a project for you yeah that that's another one i think um i see you know I, generally like if i'm going to run a race i think i want to go in knowing i'm like super well prepared and like giving myself the best like opportunity to run well I think yeah. UTMB like you know is a, is another is another step up from some of these other things I'm mentioning where of to, course. Do, to do really well there like it takes a very specific approach um and like I wouldn't want to necessarily go just to like run it I, I would want to go to compete and do well um and so that would just like take a, a shift in i guess how i approach things and it might mean spending time in europe or spend, like somewhere where i can better prepare for for yeah just what that course has to offer um yeah so that's something i'd love to do i don't know like where i think like i could see myself doing like occ or ccc um yeah. In, like in the next year or two to prepare for UTMB and kind of get a feel for the course. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think, you know, it's definitely, definitely on the goal list. Uh, <laughs> I think just being younger, I think I, I, not that I take for granted that like, you know, but I, like I, um, I guess I hope to have like many, many years like in the sport and competing at a high level so i'm not in a rush to necessarily yes do of course all at once um but also i don't yeah i don't want to take that for granted and yeah so there are some some goals that i'd like to get done sooner rather than later <laughs> perfect so uh what is the best place to follow you on social media and um yeah i um Uh, yeah, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and I think if you, yeah, just search, search my name, um, it'll, it'll come up. Um, and have, it's the same for move free. I think you are on Facebook. Yes. Yeah. We're on, yeah. So we're on Facebook, Instagram, the website, movefreedesigns.com. I've also got a personal website where I try to update like my racing schedule and post other content there. Um, And yeah, and then and, if you ever and really on your site, uh, I say to people to go see all to your accomplishment is very impressive. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, often at races in New England. So if you ever come down to, uh, well, if you're in Canada, come down to New England or wherever you are. Um, yeah, I like that's the best place to meet people <laughs> at a race. And yeah, so that would that'd be awesome. So thanks, thanks a lot, and um, I wish you the best preparation for next year for your possible championship in Australia and to beat your PB at Boston. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate you having me on. It's been great chatting. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your time. Okay, take care.